I'm going to transform this ocean monument in Minecraft Hardcore, turning it into a crazy farm that generates mounds of items per hour. To do this, I'm going to destroy the monument, build the farm, remove a lot of the world, and then finally finishing it off with a custom ocean monument build. But before we do that, we need to raid an ocean monument. I've picked out an ocean monument that's only a few hundred blocks from spawn. For the sake of speed, I'll make use of some slime blocks, redstone blocks and TNT so that we can blast our way into the monument straight to the Elder Guardians. Doing this made killing all three of them a quick and simple cast to complete. Once I removed the mining fatigue effect, I went looking for the sponge room within the monument, ending up with a lot of sponges. These will be useful later on. Now let's move towards removing this ocean monument. Since I've been working underwater for a lot of this project, setting up a conduit sounds like a good idea. I went and raided a nearby shipwreck looking for a buried treasure map. This map led me back to spawn where I found a buried chest containing a heart of the sea. This could then be combined with nautilus shells to create a conduit. But I didn't have enough, so I went looking for my OP fishing rod, found it and went to do some fishing. After only a few hours, I had enough shells, so I finally crafted the conduit. Going back to the monument, I went beneath it, stole a few blocks, and then built the conduit in the frame to go with it, giving me the water breathing effect. Now, I could start removing the monument right now, but all these gardens are going to slow me down. We can fix that. All we need to do is stop them from spawning. We can do that by building a mob switch. This essentially keeps hostile mobs loaded at all times, filling the mob cap, meaning that nothing new can spawn. Fortunately, this will be a quick and relatively pain-free process as I already have all the required materials back at base. After collecting those materials, I went back to the spawn chunks and picked out a location right next to the shulker farm. I had this whole thing built in under 10 minutes. Then it was just a simple case of moving the shulkers from the farm into the mob switch. So at this point, all I need to do is turn this thing on with my bow and also mob spawning is disabled elsewhere in the world. Meaning I can finally start removing this ocean monument. This should be plenty of space for this farm. Unlike other designs, the one I'm using takes up the full monument bounding box and it requires an insane amount of resources. Sounds like a lot of work, but that's why I'm here. So I'm going to be building most of this farm using 21,000 cobblestone. That's about 12 and a half shulker boxes. I'm not mining that by hand. Fortunately, I can build a cobblestone farm. This design is relatively complex and requires all these materials, which are easy to acquire. After getting these shulkers filled, I need to build this farm. Since I need it quick, I'm going to build it here in the star base. This area on the surface should work great. Now, when it comes to running this farm, all I need to do is activate this circuit, then quickly jump down before I get blown up. Then all I need to do is fill the 12 and a half shulkers I need manually. I'm going to automate this process at some point. So that marks off one of the resources required for the guardian farm. Next up, I need three shulkers of obsidian. This is easy to do because I still have a bunch of obsidian stored in the end from back when we destroyed the end island. I then went and collected a bunch of soul sand and crafted a lot of cobblestone slabs. Now all I need to do is collect these shulkers move them over to the ocean, then I can finally start building this thing. Now, I know this farm looks big when compared to other designs, but it really is, especially when you compare it to the next phase of this project. The next phase of this project involves me removing all the terrain around the farm, taking it way down to bedrock. That's going to be a lot of work. To start, we need to deal with all of this water. I can't start removing this immediately, as it will fill back in. First, I need to build a wall. This wall will involve tens of thousands of blocks. I'll be using cobblestone for this. Now I don't want to store all that cobblestone manually, so now I think it's time to automate our cobblestone farm storage setup. This is going to be a mix of water streams and shulker loaders. Four times hopper speed shulker loaders to be exact. Now I can sit here at AFK and all these shulkers will be filled manually. Then it's just a case of taking these out of storage, move them over to the guardian farm, and I can finally start building this wall. To make things interesting, I'll be going with a circular wall. This circle is 600 blocks across. That big that I needed a render distance mod to show the whole thing. This area is huge. Draining this is going to take a long time. I'm going to need a lot of sand. However, mining sand is far too slow, so let's dupe it instead. To build this dupe, I need a lot of redstone materials. Gathering these took a while. I also gathered some additional materials in this second shulker box. 
After picking them up, we need to find a stronghold. For the stupid, I'll use the stronghold I found back in my first 100 days. Before I start building anything, I need to expand this area. I only pushed the walls out by a few blocks. Now, I need to remove the portal frame using this neat little trick. Red mushrooms are OP. After doing that three more times and removing the mushrooms, I'm ready to construct this stupor. Building this stupor was fairly straightforward. I went up layer by layer, double checking everything as I went. After finishing that, I wrapped this part of the project up by building a chunk loader, both the overworld side and the nether side. This means I can keep this side of the duping setup loaded permanently. Before we start using this thing, we need a storage system in the end. That's where this extra shulk of materials from earlier comes in handy. This storage system was really quick to build. Like other systems used in this video, it is shulker based. After building that, all I had to do was fill this storage system with shulkers, go back to the overworld to turn on the chunk loader, and then finally turn on the duper. I then went AFK in the end to then come back to a storage system full of sand, meaning I could start draining the area around the guardian farm. But first I had to go and turn the duper off, and in doing so, I broke it, so I had spent 10 minutes fixing everything. After fixing that duper, I came to the realisation that I need a lot more sponges. A few stacks at least. So, I gathered some monument raiding supplies, then spent the next few hours raiding nearby monuments, ending up with a lot of sponges. Most of which had to be dried out, using the nether. This will speed up the draining process. I then collected the sand that was in the end storage, went to repair my gear, then flew over to the guardian farm, meaning the draining phase of this project could begin. To start, I'm going to section off a really small area, an area with a width that is perfect for using sponges. Draining this section was a quick process. Gathering all those wet sponges took a while. Now that I look at it, that was a really small section. Draining it this way will take thousands of hours. I have another idea. Why don't I use flying machines? I saw a design by Razeworks from a few years ago that should be perfect for this project. In a creative world, I've prepped a large section of water and I have this machine over here ready to go. All I need to do is update this observer and the machine is away. Look at it go. This thing is really fast and it removes a lot of water at once. Let's build it. The issue is that it requires a lot of resources I don't currently have. Mainly lots of slime blocks and honey blocks. So to build this machine, I'll need two things. I'll need to expand the slime farm then build a honey farm. Expanding the slime farm was a straightforward process. I added a bunch of extra spawning platforms. I've been meaning to do this for over a year now. That cobblestone farm from earlier came in handy. So, with the slime farm sorted, let's work on this honey farm. First, I need a lot of bees. I don't currently have any, so it's time to do some exploring. After a while, I had a bunch of beehives and some bees. I then had the idea to build a bee breeding setup. So, I crafted a bunch of campfires, fence gates, and collected some flowers. Then, I built a quick and simple breeding setup. To breed all these bees, I'll use the poppies from the iron farm. For the honey farm design I have in mind, we'll need 80 beehives full of bees. So, I started breeding. After a few hours, I had all the bees needed for this honey farm. I then went and gathered all these resources. Then, I found a spot in the nether roof that was perfect for this farm. I managed to fit the entire thing within range of a chunk loader, meaning I could have it running at all times. The only thing I had to do now was place all of these beehives. Now, before I turn it on, I need 80,000 bottles. Good thing we have a sand duper. Turning that sand into glass will take a long time, so I decided that a temporary super smelter would be useful. Once again, the surface above the starter base would work great. I only had a small amount of coal to start this, so I used it to smelt a few shulkers of logs, giving me lots of charcoal. This charcoal was then used to smelt all the glass needed for these bottles. After AFKing for a bit, all of the glass was ready to go, so I spent a while crafting them into bottles. I then moved all the bottles over to the honey farm and filled the whole thing. Then all I had to do was activate the chunk loader and turn on the farm. I then flew back to base and went AFK at the slime farm. I ended up with a lot of honey bottles that needed to be crafted into blocks. Same with the slime. Then I had to collect a few other resin components, meaning I had all the resources required for this draining machine. After collecting this box of resources, I'm going to fly over to the garden farm area. My first priority is to test this within the circle. First, I'm setting up another portal so that I can dry off my sponges if the need arises. This deep part of water here should work perfect for this test. As this is a simple design, the building process was fairly fast. So, to activate this machine, all I need to do is update this observer and the flying machine is away. Oh no, I think I messed up. The water isn't being removed. I need to stop this machine real quick, then build a wall around it in the water below, and then I'll drain that entire section. That way when we go to activate this machine, the water will be removed. I just need to remove the kelp from the boundaries to stop it filling back in. I followed the machine, removing the kelp as I went, and five minutes later it collided with the wall at the far side of the circle. This machine is a must have for anyone that's draining an ocean like I am. 
I can now use this section to easily build the draining machine over and over again to remove the ocean. I'll be starting with the deepest sections first. I spent many days working away at this project, putting in a few hours here and there. I used some sand from earlier on to build some temporary walls to help with the draining process. As you can see, we've made a lot of progress already. The water remaining within the circle will be a little harder to remove. I'll section parts of this water off and use my sponges. Once again, many days were spent on this. I also use the machine here and there. Now that all the water is removed, this is looking really cool. With the water removal phase of the project completed, we can now work towards removing all this terrain. I'm going to be using TNT dupers, so to protect the outer walls I'm going to mine them down to bedrock, then I'll cover them with water, giving them blast protection. I also mine out a border around the garden farm, then I cover it with water as well. Now, all the important bits are protected. So the TNT dupers I have in mind for this project need guardrails, as I don't want them flying off elsewhere in the world destroying all my other builds. I'll be using glazed terracotta for this. So, taking a quick trip to the nearby mesa, gathering all the terracotta required, then using the super smelter I built earlier to smell all the glazed terracotta needed for this project. Then, it was just a case of going over to the garden farm and building the boundary. I need to make this boundary a bit bigger than the current circle so that the TNT dupers can remove everything. I'll probably have to build more of these during the course of the terrain removal. Now, it's time for the fun bit. Let's work on that TNT duper. The resources required for this are really easy to get at this point. After picking those up, it's time to head back over to the garden farm. I'm going to build this TNT duper very carefully. One wrong move and things could go bad. To start this duper, all I need to do is remove all of these chests, then update this observer, and the TNT duper is away. Let's have some fun. After letting the TNT duper run across the whole area once, I had to build some new guardrails lower down so that I could run it again. I also had to build some around the garden farm so that things didn't break. Let's just say it would have been better if I built the garden farm last. As I got further and further down, the machine got faster to run. It did however start leaving some floating blocks. I hate deep slate. Then, once the bedrock started appearing, I knew it was close to the end. This area is insane. I've never done a project like this before. We have so much space down here. This has got to be the largest ocean monument transformation in hardcore Minecraft. Now we can't leave the project as it currently is, so let's work towards building something here. To start, I need to tidy things up. First, I need to remove the water from these walls. Having blocks for this would be helpful. Then, it should just be a case of quickly placing this top layer of blocks, removing all of the water. But, it isn't that simple. I need to go around this entire thing making repairs. This water was useless. So here's a before shot, and here's an after shot. This is looking much better. Now, I need to remove the water from this farm, make repairs, then remove the terrain beneath it, leaving us with this insanely tidy area which is ready for building. Now, I've had an idea for this build since the start of the world. Before I start, let's head into a creative testing world. So, what I have in mind for this is we do a large monument build in the middle, the monument being represented by this block. Then we do a circular perimeter around it. Now, I don't want these walls to be flat, so let's step them back giving us three levels. These levels will have grass and trees. Since the walls will be a big part of this, I need to work in their texturing. I can't make them too detailed as it will take away from the central build. So, I'll keep them flat and we'll use a mix of different blocks. I want to start with some grey tones at the bottom, then moving up to a light grey concrete like texture. Here's a mix of blocks that will work. Getting them in a nice gradient is another thing entirely. I have an idea for this. I'm going to summon my inner Bob Ross and we'll use this canvas. Using world edit, I'm going to break it up into different sections. The bottom section will be the darkest and the top section will be the lightest. Then when it comes to selecting blocks, I'll use the world edit replace function to fill it in. Here's the command and block percentages I used. Then I do this for each individual layer, changing the materials and percentages as I went, ending up with this masterpiece. While you admire that, I went and designed everything else, but you'll need to keep on watching to see the finished build. So, jumping back onto the hardcore world, I have a truly insane resource list to put together. I need over a million items. If I could get a subscriber for each item, that would be great. Fortunately, I can farm a lot of these. Let's focus on the wool items first, by building a wool farm. Here's all the resources I need for this farm, which I already have a lot of. I do, however, need a bunch more sheep, so let's breed some. Then, I got to work building the sheep farm in record time, plus moving all the sheep into place. Since I'm going to be in the area for a while, I'll leave it turned on while I work on the next items. I'm going to need a lot of concrete. Now I can use a sand duper to do concrete powder, but concrete is another story. Converting it manually takes far too long. Once again, I can build a machine for this. 
I decided to build it right next to the starter base, allowing for easy use. Then it was just a case of giving it a quick test run. All I need to do is place my blocks here, and then these blocks are moved over into the blast chamber, where they're blown up and stored automatically. To get all the required resources, I'm going to need to AFK for a while. First, I'm going to prep the storage needed to house all of these items. This island next to the garden farm should work great. These chests will hold around 700 chocolates. After being AFK for many hours, these chests are full, meaning I can officially start construction. I'm going to start with the outer wall so that I can hide all the old terrain. Here, I'm making use of that grading technique I showed you earlier. At first, I was building this layer by layer, but at some point I decided to do this in sections instead. When I got to the grass section, I placed a layer of cobble so that it looked better for now. Then, I continued up to layer 2, and then finally, layer 3. The walls in the final layer were taller and more exaggerated to make the build feel larger than it was. This place looks completely different with these walls finished. This gradient looks great, especially from far away. This whole place is looking a little grey though, so it's time for a splash of colour. Let's place some grass. Wait a minute, what's the ocean grass texture like here? Let me get some grass real quick. Placing that grass down, I'm not liking it. No, that doesn't look good at all. Let's get rid of it. Instead what we'll do is we'll use a gradient method from earlier on to build our own grass texture. Good thing I planned ahead for this. The grass gradient looks far more vibrant than regular grass. It makes use of moss blocks, green wool and concrete powder. That was the splash of colour this build needed. This is looking great. It will look even better once it's completely full of trees. We won't be building default ones. Let's do some custom ones for this build. I'm jumping into a creative world once again to show you how I build my custom trees. First, I start off with the central trunk. I build it almost as high as the final tree will be. Then I return to the base of the tree and I expand it, making it look nice and organic. I then move up the tree and I start placing my branches. I always go with four large branches coming off in each direction. I twist and turn them at random, giving it a unique shape. I then add slabs and stairs here and there to help with the overall shape. Then I use fences to make smaller branches. And finally, I start adding layers of leaves, with lots of fair pockets in between them. I feel that these types of trees look better using this method. If you want to do your own custom tree, following this little mini tutorial, you can have your own custom tree in under 5 minutes. Back in the hardcore world, I got to building all these trees. I used 3 different designs using the method I just showed you, but with different blocks, making the forest feel more diverse. I went layer by layer as I thought it looked better for the time lapse, and I have to admit, it looked great. Flying around this place now feels so much better. It's looking amazing. I can even fly between all of the trees. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get to the main event. Let's work on this central build. So when it came to designing this central build, I wanted to do something interesting. Almost everyone that does these transformations will keep the original shape of the ocean monument and might switch out the blocks. Then there are others that do a small custom build. I wanted to be different. First of all, I wanted this build to be massive. It had to go from bedrock to above sea level. I achieved this by doing a multi-level build, similar to the outer wall. That way I had multiple layers that could contain other structures and builds. The main inspiration for this build was an ancient Sumerian ziggurat, with a hint of ancient Greek architecture here and there. Part of this build was inspired by the ocean monument transformation Trixie Blocks done. You should check that out after this video. I also wanted the player to be able to walk from the bottom of the build all the way to the top, allowing me to expand the build and add to it in the future. This transformation is insane, it looks amazing. At this point, I'd say the exterior phase of this project is complete. I don't have a name for this project yet, I'm thinking something Atlantis related. Leave your suggestions in the comments. Now the exterior might be finished, but the interior is another question. I've got a lot of space down here, let's focus on getting this farm operational. Right now, it won't work as the gardens will teleport to the nether with nowhere to go. I need a killing system. The results of a for said system are easy to come by. The issue will be constructing it in the nether safely. So, I'll be placing the killing system below the nether roof, which isn't exactly safe, so we'll have to do this really fast. This area close to the nether fortress is where this will be built. Building this system was a fairly quick process. I just had to remove a bit of lava here and there, and then build the rest of it. That came together really quick. So the gardens will appear at the top of this, then they'll fall and die down here. Then the items will fall further, and then go through this portal. Now I need to go back to the overworld to handle these items. The storage for this will be built below the farm. Due to the sheer quantity of items, shock loaders will be used for this. The items will shoot out of the portal down there, then they'll follow the water streams ending up in these shulker loaders. I've split these up so that I can have a separate chest wall for each item. Then I'll burn all of the other stuff I don't want. And with that out of the way, the garden farm is ready to go. 
Before I actually start using this farm, I want to get this interior finished. It will have to be a large one to fit this space. I'll probably end up removing the current floor as I want the inside to have a different feel. Let's get started. As you can see straight away, the materials for this interior differed massively when compared with the materials used outside. I wanted the inside to have a nice warm feeling to it as the exterior block palette didn't do that. Most of this interior will make use of brown earth tones provided by the wood, then some highlights provided by the carpets and bushes. I lit this space using sea lanterns, both visible and hidden ones, plus the use of additional lanterns here and there. I also wanted to avoid having one long hallway, hence why this interior is broken up into multiple sections. Yes, it will make me take a bit longer to access the farm items, but that's the sacrifice I'm willing to make in order to have this interior make sense. Besides, I can use all these twists and turns to branch off into other farms in this build later on. And the best bit about it is it only took 2 hours to build all of that. Now, let's do a walkthrough of this interior. First of all, this entrance looks blocked off, but that's not the case. If I push this button, the wall will slide down, revealing our interior, where we are immediately greeted with a wall. Lines of sight are important in this build. It forces you to look at the smaller details as you navigate around. Speaking of small details, what do you think of my diamond statues? Subtle flex, I know, but you can do the same if you get your diamond dharma from villagers. And I have a great many of them. Continuing on through the build, I have hallways and rooms here and there which helps to fill up the space. We then come to this sparsely decorated hallway with buttons in the floor. Once again, these are doors. The areas behind them are the storage silos for farms that will eventually be hooked up here. I could also access the rest of the monument using this door. Same on the other side. After closing these up, let's continue. After a few more twists and turns, we end up at the Guardian Farm storage. This looks much better than what we originally had. I also went ahead and installed an overflow system just in case the storage fills up. And on the opposite side, a quick way to reload the shulker loaders below. This is mirrored at the other end of the hallway. At this point, I'd say the interior phase of this project is now complete. Now, let's make use of this interior as I want this place to have multiple uses. The first thing I have in mind is a tree farm. I already have a really good tree farm back in the spawn chunks. Let's move this one over to the monument. I started by removing the roof which was larger than I remembered. Good thing is I won't be needing this roof for this project. Then I removed the farm beneath it, making sure to collect all the items. I ended up leaving the storage system there as I'd have to enter that later on. I also went ahead and dismantled the bone mill farm as the tree farm would be useless without it. Then it was just a case of getting it built over in the monument. As I've done this before, building it again was a quick and simple process. That and I didn't have to worry about fixing anything due to the placement of the storage module. Then I went ahead and gave it a quick test run to verify that everything was working perfectly. And there we go, this farm is ready to go once again. I went and rebuilt the storage for this off camera and made sure that it was linked to both the farm and the storage silos built inside the interior. Now all I need to do is go and empty the old storage, take all the empty shulkers, then remove it. Next up I'd like to work on a dedicated crafting area as I have a few projects coming up that will require millions of crafted items. Plus I need a quick system to craft up the drops from this garden farm. The resources required for what I have in mind, I already have a lot of. So, let's build this thing. This mass crafting system was designed by Amango and can be used to craft 3.5 million items per hour. It will require the use of the item scroller mod to be used properly. This system also requires you to input full shulkers of each item, so I won't be able to use this thing properly for a little while. And there we go, this mass crafting system is ready to go. I have a feeling that I'll be using this a lot in the near future. Next, I'd like to work on a new super smelter. I know I bought one earlier, but I'm not a fan of it. I want something a little bit different. The design I have in mind is relatively simple, requiring all of these items. So, let's build it. This super smelter design was made by Cubic Mirror. It contains 64 furnaces allowing for faster smelting than our current setup. It also uses a lot of redstone. This redstone is used to time how long it will take to smelt items, where it will then send more plus some additional fuel, allowing it for increased efficiency. So, to use a super smelter, I start by inputting a small amount of fuel. I'm going with 64 charcoal, that's one per furnace. I'm going to smelt up 27 stacks of logs to make more fuel for this thing. So the general idea is that the tree farm over there will fuel this smelter. So after inputting the items and turning on the system, I didn't have to wait long for all the items to be smelted. This setup is far superior to the one back at the starter base. Now that all of that's out of the way, let's use this guardian farm. First of all, I need an AFK spot. This AFK spot will be above the entire build, meaning we can see everything while we wait for this farm to run. I'm going to power up to Y160. This will be the perfect height for this AFK spot. I went ahead and built a box with a door on the side, meaning that I'll be safe from phantoms while I AFK. Even with that done, I still can't use this farm. I haven't let this build up whatsoever, meaning more mobs will spawn outside of the farm than inside it. Let's fix that. I'm going to start by lighting up the interior using some sea lanterns. That's so much better. When it comes to lighting up the exterior, I'm going to do things a little different. First, I'm going to place some sea lanterns in the ground across the entire central build. Then I cover them up 
with carpets making them blend in. I also do this on the roofs of the buildings. Now, this entire build should be more proof. The exterior walls are outside of the spawning radius and I won't bother lighting them up. So now, let's do a 1 hour AFK session. That AFK session was a massive success. I ended up with all this loot. Using shulker box loaders was a good call. It's actually amazing looking at how much I've done in this project. Starting off with nothing more than an ocean. Building a farm, draining said ocean, removing all the terrain, then ending up with this amazing build. Let me know what you think about it in the comments.